Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have with me a very, very special guest, Alex McRobbs, who's going to speak to us about sobriety, um, the sober journey, and about her personal uh, sobriety journey and yoga journey. Hi Alex and welcome to my channel. Hi Pooja, I am so delighted to be invited to, to be here today. I'm very, very excited to have you here and thank you for taking time out um, and uh, spending some time with me here um, to share all the goodness that you have to share with my viewers. Um, so before we dive into the topic, I'm going to introduce Alex to everybody just a little bit. And of course, um, along the conversation, you'll get to know more and more about her. Also, before I start, um, I'll be putting Alex's details in the description box below. Uh, you'll have her links, her Instagram handle, uh, links to her podcast as well. So do check her pages out because there's a lot you can take from all those um, uh, pages. So Alex is a yoga instructor and also a bar instructor. She is an entrepreneur and a sober coach. She also has her own podcast. And for the rest, I'm going to leave it to the conversation. I don't want to give away too much because we're going to talk about her projects and what she's done in the last 12 months that has been so inspiring for me and that can be inspiring for you as well. So once again, very, very warm welcome, Alex. We are going to dive into the topic now. So like I said, we're going to talk about sobriety. And I'm going to start with a question that might seem a bit funny, but it's simply, what is sobriety? What does the word sober mean? And the reason I ask this is um, because most of us, or maybe it's just me, we think of sober uh, at its most basic level, which is the act of not drinking, um, which might be enough for someone like me who's not on a sobriety journey per se. But because I've been reading up about it um, and because I've been curious about it, I realized that it, it's not a even close to the scope and the depth of what this word means and the meaning that it can have for someone on this journey. So yeah. you're a sober coach. Um, you'd be able to shed some light on this. So why don't you tell us about it a little more? Yeah. So I love that question that you've asked because actually when I first quit drinking, I did not use the word sober. Um, and the reason why I didn't use that word is because I feel like the word sober has a bit of a stigma a little bit. Um, it's associated with a lot of people that call themselves sober are recovering alcoholics. And so there's this idea that if you're sober, that you're in recovery. And so the program where I quit drinking, they actually use the word alcohol free. So that was what I described myself as for a long time. Um, and, and somewhere along the way, I, sh I think it was maybe after a year being alcohol free, I chose to start calling myself as sober. And the reason why is basically because of the stigma around it, because I think there's such a, um, such a negative association with, um, people with being sober. And I thought that by using the word sober to describe myself, it would be like reclaiming and helping turn the word into more of a positive thing. Um, so there are so many different ways that people describe themselves um, who have quit drinking. You know, alcohol free is one, sober is one, teetotaler, um, what other words? I, I saw a big list the other day and there were maybe like 10 things on the list. Um, and, and I'm very much of the belief of like, whatever word that you want to use to describe yourself is great. Um, and so for example, like some people really find that the term alcoholic helps them. Um, and for me, it was a term that I never wanted to adopt because it just didn't resonate with me. And so I'm super open to kind of anyone identifying themselves, like however they choose to, um, what does sober mean for me personally? I think what it means is, um, I don't know, like, of course on its basic level, it is that I don't drink. Um, but I also think of it for me as like, a, I don't know, 
know, by labeling myself sober out loud, it's like almost being an advocate for the alcohol free movement. Um, and I've seen it said before on Instagram, you know, like not everyone who quits drinking has to shout on the rooftops about it, but like I'm shouting for everyone, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so it's like a, it's a label of pride for me about like the whole process I've been on. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I think you, you have reason to be proud about it because um, I've known you for 12 months now and I, I've seen you grow uh, in this uh, journey and on this path and um, you're inspiring so many. So that's, that's definitely something to celebrate. And, um, and I've seen a post, um, I don't remember when you posted this, but you had posted something about um, being going on to a sober journey does not have to be only for people who are addicted to alcohol. And um, it, it can be for anybody who is just curious about their relationship with alcohol or wants to evaluate um, what their relationship is with alcohol, which was very, very interesting for me because uh, if I speak for myself, I'm, like I said, I'm not on a, a sobriety journey per se, but I've gone from uh, occasional drinking to drinking once in a blue moon to no drinking. Um, so it, it's different for everyone. And uh, you know, it's it's about spending some time with yourself, reevaluating the, the the relationship you have with alcohol, and asking yourself when, how, why <laughs> you're drinking, and then um, knowing why why you you're making the change that you're making. Um, right. So thank you for sharing that. And now, before we talk more about uh, your yoga journey, I'd love to ask you as a sober coach uh, because we're talking about a journey and just like any other journey in life any journey that involves some kind of transformation this one as well uh, can be a long one with some potential pitfalls before someone can get to a stage where it evolves more naturally or where you know they can get to a stage where they can say no thank you to someone offering them a drink and that comes from deep within because they know you know what this is no longer part of my life um so it, in all transparency uh through the coaching that you've done or in your own journey how is the first month into this journey like the first few days or 30 days uh into this journey like yeah um oh my goodness it was so hard um, it was so, so hard. Um, I decided that I was going to quit drinking. It had been something on my mind for a long time. I actually did a lot of Googling about how to quit drinking. Um, I ended up coming across, stumbling across this program online that was kind of giving me targeted ads. And so it was in my head, but I also was like, you know, I can't quit because I have these holidays coming up. I have these trips coming up. I have these occasions. It's not the right time. And this was kind of my like sort of excuse going on in my head. And I had, so I'll tell you about kind of the trigger point for me to realize that I really had a problem. There were two significant moments for me. Um, and I've shared this on other podcasts before. Um, so some of you might've heard the story, but I was um, in, it was Christmas and I was in Laos and I was staying in a village in Laos um, for New Year's Eve. And um, I found out right before getting on the slow boat to go to this village that alcohol wasn't allowed. And I got really um, annoyed. I felt like New Year's was ruined. I was literally trying to plan a flight to Bangkok so that I could drink alcohol on New Year's. And this was a moment for me when I don't think I processed that that was a, a red flag, but it was a moment that stuck out for me. And then about four months later, it was almost an identical scenario. It was my birthday and me and my mom were hiking up the high Atlas mountains to stay in a homestay. And again, there was no alcohol available. And I brought a bottle of wine and I put it in my backpack. And then I said to my mom, you know, you can't share this with anyone because it's my birthday and you know I really want to have this wine and we finished the bottle and there was no wine left and then I was just in this mood because I just wanted to keep drinking and that was the night when I, I I remember going to bed that night and 
um, just thinking, you know, I can't drink anymore. Like this has to be the end. And so there were about four more nights left in Morocco. And I obviously did not quit because it would ruin my vacation. <laughs> so I kept drinking and it was on the flight back from Morocco that I decided to quit. And so um, that was my day zero. It was originally only supposed to be for 28 days. So that would be one of the biggest piece of advice I would give people is that forever seems impossible. And so the best thing is to just chunk it up. Like I hit, I said 28 days, my uncle, when I had him on my podcast and he said that he only said, you know, I'm going to quit for a couple days <laughs> at the beginning and now for him, it's been like four years. Wow. Um, so yeah. So I would say to people who are starting out, if you chunk it down into a smaller thing and you don't say forever, that helps a lot. Yeah. Um, so I initially only was going to do about a month. And, um, the hardest thing for me was that I had, I had alcohol withdrawals because I was drinking every night in the, in the time leading up to when I quit, I was drinking, first of all, I had a lot of vacations. Like in that time period, I was backpacking around Southeast Asia. I went to Norway. I had people visiting for the special Olympics. I was in Morocco. So I had like all these excuses to be drinking all the time. But we also know that Abu Dhabi party culture is like, you know, brunch and ladies night. And so I don't think in retrospect, like, I don't know if I was drinking any more than my friends were, you know, like, I think a lot of people were drinking at the level that I was. Um, and maybe I was drinking a bit more than, than the average person, but I just don't think people saw me and thought necessarily that I had a problem with alcohol. And so I found that the withdrawal was like the hardest thing of all. Um, and then once I got through it, um, it's like, it's like just pushing through to that point and just believing that it will get better. Um, because there was a day when it switched, like it was probably around two weeks in where it did get better. And that was when I was like, you know, I really don't want to ever go through that again. <laughs> um, and so for me, it was such a hard withdrawal and the cravings were so bad that once I finally, um, got to that point where I was feeling better, I just, um, I just didn't want it anymore. Um, and so I think in the first month, you just have to believe that it's, I've actually been speaking about this in my yoga classes lately, things often get worse before they get better. <laughs> And that has kind of been happening in my life right now. Like things got really, really bad and now they're getting better. And I think with alcohol, it's the same thing. Like it's going to be worse and eventually you will hit the sunshine, but you just have to believe that you're going to get there. Yes. Yes. Those are very, very powerful words. And um, I'd like to add to that, just like in any other journey, um, you know, there are, you, you need to embrace everything that comes along. And I read somewhere just yesterday, um, I mean, I don't know if we're talking about rock bottom in every case, but um, the lessons that you learn when you hit that rock bottom are sometimes greater, uh, or the gifts that you get from that rock bottom are, are greater than what you would get at the top of um, a mountain or the highest mountain. So it, it's, and again, like in any other journey, it's about you know putting yourself up to a, to a high standard and then finding that sense of personal integrity and then you find that fortitude to keep moving and to believe um, in in what you've set yourself up for so small little goals help that's what you're saying and that that's wonderful um right and um now Talking about the last 12 months, <laughs> I think the last, now we can say it's been a year. March 2020 is, um, I think it's safe to say that the world was turned upside down um, and uh, so much happened. And, it, you know, th there was this phase, I think it was March, um, April, May, where we saw a lot of um, concepts like day drinking or zoom um what do they call it zoom happy hours uh, or you know wine o'clock uh, getting normalized um and although it was funny in in the beginning it started off as a joke it, it very soon turned into something quite serious um but now that i look back and even then i realized and i i noticed that 
many people very, very quickly shifted their focus from celebrating with alcohol to health and wellness, because I think people started to realize that this wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. It was here to stay and they needed to buckle up and, you know, take care of their health um, or they were going to succumb to whatever was happening around. Um, so I'd love to know from you how the last 12 months in particular have been um, on this journey or if, if you have had some experiences with people you've been coaching or if you have any message for anyone who might still be struggling because you know the last 12 months have affected everybody in some way or the other and there has been anxiety and depression. So what would be your message or your experience relating um, to these last 12 months? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I have been saying since in 2019, I did a blog post where I was writing about how I believe I was like, you know, in 10, 20 years, I think people are going to speak about alcohol the way we speak about cigarettes. Um, you know, and I thought that it would take much longer to get to that point. And I think the pandemic has gotten us there way faster than I ever imagined because as you say like it was the drinking was it was like a funny joke at the beginning of the pandemic and 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 then it became serious because people are isolated and they don't have support and the media coverage that I'm now seeing around alcohol is like it blows my mind because you know I'm heavily engrossed in like all the sober literature right because this is the kind of stuff that I've I pulled myself into when I was quitting to kind of support myself. And a lot of these facts were, you know, they've been written about by lots of sober authors, but it, they have not hit the mainstream media. And one of the reasons for that is because most of the studies into alcohol harm are funded by alcohol companies, unfortunately. And so they promote the, they promote the idea that moderate drinking is healthy for you. And so a lot of people um, are mis kind of guided on that. Um, and, but, you know, so I've been invited to teach a, a yoga class on Instagram live in a few, uh, at the end of this month. And it is to, um, promote or not to promote, to raise awareness around the lives lost for alcohol related deaths. And in the U S alone in 2019, it was 88,000. And now in 2020, it is 95,000. So it's gone up by like over 10,000 in a year, or almost 10,000 in a year. Um, and so I hope I'm getting those numbers correct, I think. Um, but it's just been like a staggering um, increase. But as it's, it's almost the same thing as we were just talking about, it has to get worse before it gets better, right? And, and that is kind of what happened. It got worse. And, and now I do think that this leaf is turning and it's getting better. Yeah. Good. You know, even in, I was just going to add one thing, even in the UAE, um, I recently got tagged on a post, um, by this woman who is a huge influencer in Dubai. She's a radio host. And she made a post last week to say, I'm struggling with my alcohol. So I'm quitting drinking. And like, how can people support me? And I was like, that was just like such a brave and such an amazing thing to share. And like, I just don't think people were sharing stuff like this, like even two years ago, like I was the only person when I first posted, I was sober. I was the only person I could think of who had ever posted something like that. So, yeah, no, definitely there. Um, again, because I, I haven't been on this journey per se, I have been curious about it because I connected with you and I've been listening to your podcast. I've listened to other podcasts. Um, and the other day I sent you a link of, uh, no, I, I just sent you a screenshot, I think of, of that book that I saw um, about sobriety. So I'm getting curious because I'm seeing you posting about it. And I think that's such a great thing. So really keep up the good work. You know, um, sometimes the people you are, um, inspiring might not come to you directly but you are having an effect on so many people um uh, through your social media pages and through what you you post so yeah keep up the good work really um you're doing such a great job um so now we come to your project so we spoke about the last 12 months and 
um, you have started a community and I'm going to let you talk about it because I'm part of that community and I'm very, very proud to be part of this community. And um, yeah, so why don't you tell us a little more about what you started um, about 12 months back, how it's going and, and what is your message? Um, what is the message that you put out in that community and how it's helping people? Yeah. Um, so I never, ever, like, I can't believe it's been a year, first of all. And I never, ever thought that this is what would come out of, um, out of March, 2020, you know, in March, 2020, my life was kind of falling apart, like going through this breakup, lost my job teaching yoga at the gym I was working for out of nowhere, you know, everything's closed. I'm in isolation. It was just the entire thing was heartbreaking. And, um, and I remember feeling really conflicted over whether to offer any Zoom yoga because I knew that, you know, I had been let go from this gym. And so they would not be happy if I did it. But I knew that if I did it, I would be taking some of their clients. <laughs> and so there was a huge conflict around like, you know, is this the right thing to do? And then I ended up just doing it because I was like, this is the right thing for like me and my heart and my soul. And so I posted, you know, yoga on zoom with Alex and, um, does anyone want to join? And I had like 60 people respond to the first post. Like it was just mind blowing. And so I started offering daily yoga classes, but it was purely, it, it's, it was so symbiotic, you know, it was for me just as much as other people, because I needed something to show up for every day and I needed people to connect with. And, you know, I was just, I was struggling as much as everyone else was. And, um, then it just kind of evolved into, you know, to be completely fair, I actually had the mindful life practice logo. I had the domain name. I had the sober girls yoga logo. Like I had all of that stuff about four or five months before the pandemic even started. Um, mm -hmm. so I had these ideas in my head the whole time, but because I was so focused on you know, working for other gyms and other studios that I just never kind of put it into motion. And then once everything was lost, there was like this window to just like create it, you know? And so it just kind of came from there. And the mindful life practice community began as purely me just like wanting to give yoga. And then it just evolved into so many things. Like we had so many beautiful people joining, you know, you with your Pilates, the bar, Jenny doing the coaching, so it kind of like, I don't know, it just evolved over time. Um, and so that was kind of the main thing that I started with. And what I love about the mindful life practice is that it's for everyone. Um, you know, I've toyed with this idea in my head as my work gets more sober, more and more sober. I have wondered, you know, should I just be running a sober community? But I think the beauty of the mindful life practice is that it's for everyone. You can show up exactly as you are like sober, not sober, man, woman, um, anywhere in the world. It's like, um, it's just for everyone, you know, and the community and the connections and the bonds that we formed are just so special and meaningful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful community. And um, so on the mindful life practice, Alex has yoga classes, bar classes, we have Pilates, we have meditations, um, and coachings as well. Um, and uh, just very recently, you also launched a sober guys, is it, is, it, is it called sober guys yoga or because you I know you have sober girls, and then you had a course for guys as well. Yes. Yeah. So the sober work came after the mindful life practice. And this is an interesting story of how this came about. I never, I, I met a psychic when I was 30 days alcohol free and he told me to become a life coach. And I didn't even know what a life coach was, but I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I started coaching and I was working one-on-one -on -one with people. And the majority of people were coming to me because of their drinking, because, um, I was open at this point on social media about being alcohol free and, I ended up coaching a colleague through 90 days alcohol free. And he wrote me a letter at the end. And this was in July, 2020, he wrote me a letter. And at the end of the letter, it said, thank you for saving my life. And this was this moment where I was like, oh my God, this is like what I'm meant to do. And so that was the turning point when I identified myself as a sober coach. Um, and that just like has completely changed everything. You know, my, my coaching programs were slow to build. And then when I became a sober coach, it just like boomed. Um, 
And then from there, that was where Sober Girls Yoga came from. Although Sober Girls Yoga, as I said, like I had the idea months ago, I actually found the logo the other day when I was going through my phone. The original logo was like fluorescent pink, which is like, so not me. (laughs) Um, But so I had that idea for a long time. And then once I, it just all kind of set into motion. And so Sober Girls Yoga is our major program. Um, You got daily emails, access to Zoom classes, um, part of a WhatsApp community. And then I ran Sober Guys Yoga for a month and now it has evolved into Sober Folks Yoga, which is just like one day where I integrate the men and the women once a week. And that's been awesome. Um, and then from there, yeah, that once I became, so I, I don't know when I started calling myself Sober Yoga Girl. I don't remember when that started, but that was really the, the turning point because then that was when I started getting inviting to be interviewed on podcasts and radio and um, some articles were done about me. And so it really was just like, I don't know. I look back now and at the beginning back then, I never thought that I would sober would become sort of to define me. Um, but it just makes so much sense because I'm just so passionate about it. And, um, I just love this work. Yeah. And you're great at it. (laughs) So now since we're talking about, um, sober journey and yoga. I have a question. You are a, you're a certified yoga instructor. And I am curious to know how, what the equation is or was with alcohol and yoga. Uh, because I, as I was reading, I, I found people saying that um, uh, while they were drinking, yoga was like a hammer that kind of like beat the hangover out of their system or helped them beat hangover out of their system the next day. Or some people described it as, you know, a place of refuge um, that they found going to the studio was somewhere they could just be with themselves without being judged. Um, Or again, you know, beating, beating themselves out of um, that, that mind chatter, so I've read a lot of um, things about that, but I've also, on the other hand, read that some people go through the sober journey first and then feel like the physical, emotional, or even existential wounds are healing. So then they can get into yoga. So I just want to ask you how your equation has been with both. Uh, was it one and the other or both together? How has it been for you? And how can yoga um, support this journey? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Um, so I found yoga a um, very long time ago. Um, I first actually did yoga for kids when I was like 10. And then I did yoga for teens. um, And then I did, you know, kind of a beginner's yoga course with my mom. So I even did yoga like before I started drinking. Um, When I started drinking, I also started going through some like mental health um, issues, which I now look back and see there was like a direct correlation between when I started drinking and when I started struggling. Um, And at this point in my life, a counselor actually recommended that I do yoga. And that was how I ended up, um, in a yoga class. And, um, I found for me, it was like years of like yoga was refuge for me. And it also, I look back now and I'm just like, how did I even do like, I would get up and do hot yoga the morning after going out partying. And I'm like, how did I even do that? Like, even if I've had like, you know, a weekend where I eat a bunch of fast food, I nowadays I'm like, I can't even do this yoga. <laughs> so it blows my mind that I used to do yoga hungover. And I used to teach yoga hungover like for years. Um, so I was teaching yoga. I've been teaching yoga now for seven years and I started practicing in 2010 regularly. So, you know, 11 years, and I've only been sober for two years of that. Um, So my drinking was still a huge part of my life when I was doing yoga. And I do think that there's one sort of one thing that made me feel like this was okay. Whereas there's some yoga influencers that I follow who would post about, you know, there was one post to remember. I remember in particular that was like walk barefoot by day, wear stilettos by night, drink vodka shots at night. Don't forget your green juice. Like it was something like that. And I saved it because I reposted it myself and it was content like that, that misled me to believe that what I was doing was like 
being the balanced yoga teacher or the, you know, person who could moderate practicing brahmacharya. Like I just didn't understand. Um, and I do think that there's this weird thing, or at least there was around the time when I was drinking, which was like, you know, beer yoga, like go do yoga at the, um, brewery, which I've done before, you know, vinyasa and vino. Um, I've done those events before I led one once, <laughs> Um, like there was just so much of this culture of like yoga plus drinking. And I don't really understand why. Um, but I think for me, I, in my head thought that it was all fine. And I even, I had yoga teachers that would say to me, like on both my yoga teacher trainings, we weren't allowed to drink. And on both trainings, I drank, like, I hope they don't take away my, <laughs> certificate for me saying that I don't advertise it because I am afraid but I remember on my most recent yoga teacher training my teacher saying you know it's drinking alcohol is gonna like you know dampen your inner fire or put out your inner fire and I laughed at him I'm like, this guy's you know crazy and uh and he was right and now I say that stuff too <laughs> but I think that um there, there is this thing that's hopefully changing. I think people are starting to understand that the, the joke's not funny anymore. And I hope that um, we're moving forward where those events are not gonna exist. I'm not saying that people should not, like that yogis can't drink. I just think that we need to respect the fact that, you know, there are people coming into the yoga practice that are, you know, former alcoholics that are sober, that whatever. And, and the way that we can make this the most inclusive is if we disassociate that completely. And say, you know, you can drink on your own, in your own time, you can do yoga on your own time, but the whole combination or idea of talking about the two, just, it only feeds into people like me who used it as a reason to say, you know, my drinking problem is fine when it wasn't fine. Um, so what was your question? I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah, I've just gone on. on alcohol. No, 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 you've, you've, uh, uh, you've answered the question. Um, it, it's, it's interesting to know, again, you know, everybody's journey is so different and unique. Uh, so there is no comparison there. Um, now, because of what you've just said, um, it, it brings me to the next question, which is about the, the, the link that there is between normal and alcohol and fun and alcohol. You know, in and now I think it's safe to say that it's not only in the West, it's everywhere in the world. This, the drinking culture has been normalized and is normalized. And it's, it's normal to have alcohol uh, in gatherings or in parties. Um, and that link between fun um, and, and alcohol is what I'm going to talk about. Because some people think that when they give up alcohol, then fun is thrown out of the window. Uh, yeah. which doesn't have to be that way. And um, I, I'd love for you to speak about this in particular, because a lot of friend circles are made around a common or a shared enjoyment or habit. And when someone takes this huge decision to give up or quit alcohol, there, there are judgments coming their way, or it can be from from themselves as well. Like I said, you know, they start to think that, okay, I'm not going to be fun anymore. I'm not going to be included in groups anymore. And of course, again, judgments coming from, from other people. So what do you have to say about that, your personal experience or, um, you know, strategies that you can share with people who want to go on this journey or on how to deal with that? Yeah, that is a great question. So when I quit drinking, I truly felt that my fun life was going to be over. Um, I couldn't imagine, you know, dinner without a glass of wine, um, going out without a beer, um, brunch without, you know, champagne or whatever we used to drink at brunch. I honestly could not imagine my life alcohol free. And I used to even think that I would never find love again, honestly, because I was like, all of my relationships have revolved around drinking. And what I realize now after, you know, two, I'm almost two years sober, which is crazy. In, in April, I'm going to be sober for two years. And um, what I have learned is that in life, as you say, we surround ourselves with people that are similar to us, right? So 
I thought that everyone in the world partied as much as I did because those were the people that I surrounded myself with. You know, I came to Abu Dhabi and I sought out the people that were going to want to go to brunch with me every weekend because that was what I was looking for in life. And as soon as I quit, I mean, it, it was hard in the beginning because I wasn't out there as being sober. And so, you know, I remember the first date I went on me freaking out about telling the guy and then I ended up telling him and then he was trying to pressure me to drink. And so he would be a bad example of like um, someone who, you know, was not able to support me. Um, but then I, I did find a relationship, someone that I was with who was fully in support of my, um, of me being sober. And um, so I have found that it was like, as soon as I started um, opening myself up to the world as being sober, being alcohol free, labeling myself as such, I ended up forming new communities and new bonds and having just as much fun with new people that share that like-minded interest. And so there was definitely a time period where I went through like a hard transition. I felt like people didn't understand me, um, lost some friends. Absolutely. Um, it's not easy. Um, but I would say that you will find your people. If you are going through that, it might take time and you might have to actively reach out. Um, and that is the benefit of like, you know, that's the whole reason why sober girls yoga has been such a success because we're bringing women together on zoom who form such close bonds because we're all supporting ourselves through the same process. And, um, so I would say, I totally understand that fear that, you know, the fun is going to be gone for your life because I felt it too. Um, but it will, it will be, I mean, my life has been a hundred times more fun because I'm not hungover. I am not stressed about money all the time. I'm not, you know, regretting or worrying about things that I've done. I just feel like all of the stress and chaos and drama from my life has just been lifted. Wonderful. And I, and I heard something just yesterday as I was listening to a podcast that it's ironic that we, um, that we link fun and alcohol because those fun moments that we think were fun um, were actually made using a depressant. Um, so that's yeah. the irony behind this. Um, uh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And um, this brings me to my, to my next question. Um, I've seen some of your uh, recent posts about beverages that you've been enjoying. And um, I've been in the hospitality industry for, for a very long time, and especially in the food and beverage uh, division of the industry. And what I've noticed is that like, in the in the past decade or so there have been a lot of innovations surrounding alcoholic beverages but very less in terms of non-alcoholic beverages but in the last maybe five years um you know i feel that entrepreneurs actually realized that the there was this gap that they needed to bridge and they've been coming companies have been coming up with amazing alternatives to to alcoholic beverages. So wine companies, beer companies, um, spirit companies are coming up with amazing, amazing beverages. And it doesn't have to be a, a, any more of that, you know, sparkling water with lemon that you need to stick with or the flavored water that doesn't even taste that great. <laughs> Nowadays, there are so many options. So just a fun question out there. What is your favorite drink nowadays? What do you drink when you go out or what do you drink uh, when you're by yourself? Great question. Um, yes. So the whole alcohol free, um, industry is like kind of booming right now as you know, the sober revolution is happening. And when I first quit alcohol, there was actually no, none of these products in the UAE. So I didn't even know that they had them out there. Um, because you know, I, there was nothing that I could find here. And so when I went back to Canada, I actually kind of got introduced to them by my mom because my mom in our house, we always had alcohol and my mom kind of wanted to support me. And so I came home to like, you know, a fridge full of all this stuff, um, alcohol-free beer and wine. And, um, and I learned that summer in Canada that they, it's actually really common, you know, because there's so many people that are now going sober for whatever reason, whether they had issues with their drinking, whether, you know, they have a health concern, whether, you know, even pregnant people. Um, and so 
they have created so many of these great products, particularly in North America and Europe, it seems to be. And now the trend is finally getting over to the UAE. And it's really exciting because I think the importance of that is like, for me, when I was newly sober, the hardest thing was feeling left out of the event because there wasn't a drink for me. And that happened so much. And I know like people have commented on my TikTok being like, oh, that's a first world problem. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I know. Like <laughs> I get that there's like bigger problems in the world, but for someone who is trying to make this massive lifestyle change, any supports that they can have is amazing. And so um, right now in the UAE, we don't, we actually don't have them yet into bars and restaurants. Um, the founder of the drink dry store, that is her vision and dream, like for the end of this year to have them in the stores. But right now I've, I've been able to sample like all the products um, and I am loving all of them. Like she has been choosing kind of the best of the best. And so I was a big alcohol-free beer person for a long time because I couldn't find any good wine. And I've just tried really good wine. I actually think I might order another case of it um, because it was like a ritual for me to drink wine with my dinner um, in my last little bit of being uh, a drinker and to be able to have a glass of wine again. It's just, it's almost like nostalgic. Like I just feel like a, a grown up, which seems so silly, but it, it, it really makes a difference for me. So what are my favorites? Alcohol-free beer and alcohol-free wine. I don't really love mocktails and be honest, they're too sugary. I never even liked cocktails back in the day, but the only reason I drink mocktails is because they don't have alcohol-free beer or wine yet <laughs> in the restaurants. And so I'm super hopeful that very soon I will be able to, you know, have an alcohol-free drink alongside my, my friends. Wonderful. And, and it, it's really good to see that. And like you said, it doesn't have to be sugary drinks anymore. There, the options that are available there are, taste as good or even better, I would say, than their uh, alcoholic counterparts with half of the calories, by the way, or even less than half. So um, now coming to um, another question, uh, because you, you mentioned about how you felt, uh, how, how you feel now, you feel much better in your, in your physical body, mentally as well. What would be, um, just to keep it short, what would be the three or four things that, you know, uh, you could share that may that are so different in your body or in your mind as well after, since you quit drinking or the two or three things that you could or you know what i'm going to put it this way when you look when you look back at what you learned about what alcohol does to your body or to your mind what are the three or four things that just made you go oh my god what was i doing to my body like, yeah yeah what would um, yeah, just an eye opener for the viewers I'm just going to turn on the light quickly because it's getting really dark in here. <laughs> the sun is setting here. Now. And I love how both of us are sitting on the floor. Yogi, yogi style. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. I learned a really interesting fact that I wanted to share actually the other day in a book I read. Okay. When you think you're having a blackout and you think that you are forgetting what happened, you're actually, you didn't forget what happened. Your brain has never made the memories because alcohol is turning off whatever part of the brain it is that forms memories. And that blew my mind. I read that in Millie Gooch's new book, Sober Girl Society Handbook. And that blew my mind because it's like thinking that you forgot what happened is one thing, but understanding that you, you, have, you have drank so much that you have shut off the functioning of a part of your brain just was like, wow. And that was such a um, a big thing for me is like forgetting exactly what I did. And then I would have panic attacks when I was hungover all the time, because I would be freaking out that people were mad at me for something that I had done. And what I have learned is that hangovers actually do induce panic attacks because of the dehydration. And so I had no idea that that was actually a, um, real scientific thing that happens. Like I thought that it was just me you know, having my own mental health issues, but like actually people around the world experience, they call it anxiety. It has, it has a name now. And I just thought it was me, but it's actually really common and, and just no one talks about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, what else? I mean, I, 
I just look like a different person from when I, I look at pictures of myself in my drinking days towards the end of it. And I just look so unwell. And, and that's so interesting to me because I was doing yoga. I was, I was doing spinning. I was, I was very active and healthy. I was eating well. And the, the, the effect that the alcohol had on my face and on my body, um, it just, it blows my mind when I look at myself in, in comparison. Um, it's like, it's like, I'm a different person. Right. And I, and I think sleep also is a very big thing. Um, oh yeah. Sleep much better, right? hundred percent. Well, that's a few things. Like I was going out to the ladies nights all the time. So I wasn't getting a full eight hours a lot of the time. Um, but also you're not, you're not getting into a deep sleep. You, you might fall asleep quicker with a few drinks, but you're not actually getting into like REM state. And, um, so I was just perpetually exhausted. You know, it's sometimes it would come to the weekend and I would sleep in, of course I would go out partying at night, (laughs) but I would sleep in until like 11 or 12 in the morning. Um, and I never sleep in anymore. Like if I do, you know, it's like today was a sleep in. I got up at 8.30. <laughs> oh, sometimes you deserve it. That, that's fine. You just um, do what your body asks you for. But yeah, that, that's very, very interesting and definitely an eye opener. And for anybody watching, um, if you have any questions, if you, if you wish to get in touch with Alex, again, I will put her details in the description box below. I'm sure just by watching this video, many people have taken a lot from this, um, from this conversation, and I have as well. Um, so I'd like to thank you, Alex, once again, for taking time out to share your knowledge, your journey with us. Um, and I look forward to having more chats with you and sharing more with our viewers. But until then, uh, once again, thank you. If you have any last words, last comments, or last little piece of advice you'd like to share with the viewers, please go ahead. Oh, thank you so much, Pooja. Um, honestly, it's just been such a treat to be invited. And what I especially like is that we're coming at it from different perspectives. And so there's so much to learn. Um, like we have also, um, you have also gone alcohol free, but in a different way per se. And so, um, it's just been really nice to kind of, to talk back and forth about it. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. And you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Bye Alex. And thank you everybody for watching. And don't don't forget to like and share this video with anybody who you think needs to uh, listen to this. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay connected and know whenever the next videos are up.